Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, listen to a little bit of Run DMC. And uh, speaking of that, this is the last installment for our interview with Daryl from Run DMC. DMC, Daryl Makes Comics. I mean, this is the last part. It was a really important interview. I'm very thankful for that. We're about to, uh, in this piece, you're about to find out what Daryl would have done if he handled the MCU. <laughs> What MCU change did you yeah, did, did you not like the most? Well, I hate the Hope. Well, Professor Hope was about they did it too fast. You know what I'm saying? They did it too fast, and also I understand they did it for the film, and I, I love the humor, but they kind of they made Thor kind of too jokey for me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I became DMC, the son of Bifred, because of Thor. I was sitting there one day, and I was like, okay, Thor is the son of Odin from Asgard. He got a brother named Loki, and he has a hammer. And I'm Daryl. I'm from Hollis. My father's name is Bifred, and I got a microphone, and I'm from Hollis. So I became son of Bifred, brother of Al. Banners my mother and runs my pal. It's McDaniels, not McDonald's. These rhymes are Daryl's, those burgers are Ronald's. I ran down my family tree, my mother, my father, my brother, and me. I put a little humor in there, but I'm always gonna be the still... devastating my controller. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little changes like that. Cause when I was reading Thor, or I was reading, you know, Marvel always had some enlightening moments, serious moments, and that all way right to, to put a joke, you know, or even Captain America, it was something that made me laugh, oh, that's different. But um, I didn't like, I just didn't like the Hulk getting his ass kicked. I, I, they did that to show, and I, I, I receive it now, they did that to show that Thanos is the, like, the, the, the most powerful thing ever. Like, it's over for the Avengers, I understand that. But the hope don't get two piece slammed and knocked out, and then you it never takes, see him come back. Yeah, it, no, like, in the comic book, Daniel says the last person I want to do battle is with the hope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He could have look after the slam thing. Hope should have laid there for a minute and it should have went back to Thanos. So now let me get back to it. Now green hair to the king and choke his <laughs> shit out of him. And then Thanos would have fought and then Thanos had to just snap this guy into infinity. <laughs> That's what should have happened. I hope they get two pieces and then slammed and he's out. No. But I can understand now when I go back, I can understand the Hulk came and he was the Hulk. And he wasn't mad. He was just mad because he's helping his friends out. So when Thanos took his hands off like that, it was like boxing. The Hulk got surprised. Yeah. So a little bit of strength left because the Hulk was like, what the hell? So Thanos being trained, Thanos served. Yes, us. right. <laughs> Thanos has strength, but as so Thanos a warrior, he was so the trained. The Hulk never took Kung Fu lessons. But see, if the Hulk would have sat down and watched Bruce Lee movies, that would have never happened. So just to subtle little changes like that, and understand Hollywood has to do it for the, the for what they're trying to. Because you, one thing with a movie, just like a biopic, you can't get everything in, in the movie. Right. So it's the subtle little things, but I think it would be more adventurous. Well, I guess they probably changed a little. No, they didn't change nothing for Star Wars, really, right? Like when those movies went there, I would. We would have to. There's read. a there's a big discrepancy between what happens in the films and what happens in the literature. That's okay. So it happens films. everywhere. Okay. So yeah. okay. There's there's some it's bound to happen. Like they like they like someone retconned what happened to Boba Fett. Like he actually crawled out of the Sarlacc pit afterwards. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So <laughs> all right. We'll blame it on Hollywood, and that's why. <laughs> Talk about know, that later. That's why I was saying. I love it that it's great on the big screen, but we don't need it because we come from the book foundation. Well, look, uh, while we're before we wrap up, yes, uh, you got DMCComics.com where yes. you can pick up your latest issues. DMC-Comics.com, oh, sorry, and then Twitter and Instagram is at DMC Makes Comics, and then Facebook is at Daryl Makes Comics. Right now, DMC so, is up to issue... Uh, issue number three is out now. We're working on issue number four. 
Uh, Amy Chu, big shout out to Amy Chu, legendary, most incredible writer ever, is on my team. And we just added the incomparable Larry Hammer. Oh. G.I. Joe. Okay. If you didn't know. If you don't know, now you know. G.I. Joe, Larry Hammer is coming on board as the team, as the leader, as the Yoda. And we're getting ready to take Daryl DMC Makes Comics Universe to a whole nother level that is going to change not just adventures, but it's going to literally change your life. Well, so we're happy. I can't wait. I yeah, can't wait yeah. to the next edition now. Yeah, yeah. But number uh, four, we're working on number four now. It's your number four is going to be that one for real. Okay. Well, look, this is this has been amazing. Um, here with Daryl and, and the place to be. This is Corey Floyd at Keystone Comic Con. Uh, we will check you out a little later, and we're out.